Welcome to the Chargers Career Forum. I'm Marcus Packer, Assistant Director of Employer Relations at the University of New Haven's Career Development Center. This initial episode, we will be focusing on the Generation X popular genre of esports. But first, let's take a look at the current state of the U.S. economy post COVID 19. 20 million more Americans filed for unemployment in April 2020. The total unemployment rate rose to 15%, but it's probably closer to 20 if you examine the real numbers. Even more disturbing, the current unemployment numbers do not reflect the millions still working on reduced schedules and pay and or furlough. Industries like hospitality and leisure have taken serious hits, while several merchandising chains like Walmart and Target are adding to their payrolls. We also see serious spikes in e-commerce and delivery firms like Amazon and FedEx. Charging forward, the University of New Haven continues to invest in and promote curriculums that are slated for employment growth and that are popular with influencers around the country and globe. Esports is one of those areas. I'd like to welcome one of our external partners, President and CEO of World Gaming Collegiate Star League, Wim Stock. So Wim, why don't you tell me a little bit about uh, your organization, uh, World Gaming uh, Collegiate Star League? So World Gaming and Collegiate Star League were thematically consistent, even though those are two brands and two different divisions, uh, were thematically consistent in that what we're doing in, in both uh, activations and, and both divisions are we're helping uh, aspiring players, um, if they aspire to get better, to improve, to uh, ultimately become a pro, uh, we, we gear all of our programming, our content, our events, around helping players do that. On the World Gaming side, it's a tournaments platform. We, we can have literally tens of thousands of players playing in a, a tournament. And um, uh, that with this platform we've had now for over, over 10 years, uh, been a valuable tool set. Um, and as you can imagine, in, in the time we're in right now, um, very valuable uh, for our partners, for the teams we work with, for the players we work with, uh, for the brands um, uh, that we that we have in our in our sponsorship uh, mix and stable, so um, this this tournament platform. Generally, what we do is we use it. We have a we have a, a, a multi layer programming. Um, any given day, you can come on our site twenty four seven. There's something to do, a match to get involved with, a tournament to to have. We have dailies, weeklies, monthlies. Uh, but what what the platform really shines for is we'll have a big event we call them our tier ones we'll have uh eight to ten a year the big events they start as online qualifiers they'll run from for eight to ten weeks online and then we'll move into live events for the championship rounds one of our biggest events every year uh, is call of duty uh we have we have uh, uh, the next one down the wrong is rocket league um and those are those are last year our Call of Duty event was 5,700 teams. That's a big event. That's the biggest one in North America. Uh, our Rocket League event last year was 2,100 teams. Um, it's also a big event. So the scale that we can um, that we can uh, build and, and leverage by virtue of our platform are really important for us. Over the course of uh, Tier 1, we went on down to a manageable number, and then uh, uh, we will put those in normal circumstances. We put them into a live event. Um, and we, we, as we were talking earlier, um, we are really venue agnostic. We try and align the best venue for the experience that supports a particular game. And, and, um, and we, I think we've done a, we've done a really good job of, of aligning those uh, venues, the, the experience around the live events, um, for, for the titles that we, uh, that we support. Every year um, we have winning uh, teams coming out of our collegiate realm and the same sort of dynamic there is that we have a, 
league, good, good uh, example, Street Fighter this year. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've culminated, we will culminate uh, our, our event. We won't do it till later in the summer because of the need for a live event around a fighting game uh, title, but, but the winning team, we, we play teams of three in the collegiate uh, side, and the, the winning team will be the top draft choice in the Street Fighter League wow. uh, next, next year. So we, wow. have, we have those kinds of relationships with a number of publishers. And, and so this notion of our, our two brands, our, our, our different activations, CSL is more league operations, World Gaming is more event or tournaments operation. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that we are consistent in the desire and the goal of helping players build their their personas, build their um, brands, build their personal brands, build their stature um, as they as they rise up um, the funnel and and uh, on their way to to uh, to to the to the pro realm. Like, what are some of the coolest trends that are, that you're seeing right now in esports? Um, well, the the one great thing, and and we we sort of play into this, I, I think. Mm -hmm. um, you know, first first of all, a couple really cool trends. First of all, you're seeing. Um, the advent of esports as a now as a uh, a lifestyle and a cultural mm -hmm. lifestyle. Look at mm -hmm. what Hundred Thieves is doing. Look what Phase Clans are doing. They, you know they've now they're they've taken this this dynamic and it's a very personal dynamic for so many people in the in that play games that mm -hmm. um, now it's it now it's a, a it's a cultural um, thing. Their, their lifestyles uh, you know revolve around games. Their behavior revolves around game. They, these these guys have been very smart the, and tapped into that and now building you know huge brands for themselves that are not they're they're certainly rooted in gaming but now their apparel and and um, other other merchandise and and content and and media uh, I think that's a really cool trend music you know now these guys are so involved and influential in the music side of things uh, the celebrity uh, the music musicians and the gamers sort of intersecting now that's a really cool thing well you know that's a good segue into my uh, next question about some of the uh, potential misconceptions about esports um a lot of folks really don't understand what it entails or where they would uh potentially find a job besides if you're unless you're an actual gamer yeah um so can you clarify a little bit like if there's any misconceptions that you see out there uh for our students well, I think I think there have been a lot of misconceptions about esports, and people just assumed, oh, it's gamers. You know, they they're they're in, in their parents' basements. They, you know, they <laughs> they don't uh, they're they they're not they're not social. Being you know, being a gamer um, is 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 not anything. Um, then then now growing up into this in, into this big big lifestyle and big cultural. Um, moment. A good good friend of mine's um, uh, a friend needed someone to talk to because his, her son was was she felt completely lost. Mm -hmm. This this was only two two or three years ago. I said all he wants to do is play gaming. All he wants to do, he's just he's 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 absorbed with this. He's consumed with it. He doesn't want to do anything else. And I said, well, you know, he's he's probably pretty good. And she said, well, I know he's good, but that doesn't what what's what's he going to amount to in his life? I said, do you know what's happening? Do you know that? That that good good competitive um, players in gaming can, can make millions of dollars if there's. Absolutely. She said, "What what are you talking about? You know this and this notion of the." So I talked earlier about the the mainstreams, the the fact that the mm -hmm. traditional mainstream and and our and the gaming mainstream. It's a it's a mainstream. There's no question mm -hmm. about it. it. The millennial Gen Z ma mainstream. They they weren't intersecting. They were running in parallel, and one didn't know about the other. Um, now that's all intersecting. Now in and the, it's, it started to intersect uh, uh, a few years ago when Overwatch League first ran their uh, grand finals on on ESPN. I it was another big moment. I people who knew what I was what doing, they finally saw it on ESPN, and they were texting me. I was I, I was at the event at Barclays, and they started texting me. Oh, this is what you do. This is what you do. <laughs> and so and so some of this, unfortunately, it's taken these these you know sort of key moments to 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 elevate and to make more visible what what esports is all about so my final question for you Wim, uh was uh, uh in terms of students like what are you specifically looking for what type of student what type of graduate are you looking for when you're uh thinking about your quintessential uh esports professional frankly i it's gonna sound funny but those who who have less respect 
for the con conventional world is whom I would want to hire. So, um, and I, I don't mean I don't mean that meaning disrespect for people or for mm -hmm. or who a, who a person is, but but mm -hmm. less respect for the things that that may there's a there's already a lot of conventions surrounding esports, but we can't we you know like those of us who who grew up in the space um, and those of us who who live in the space and work in the space mm -hmm. we. We, we can't let that happen. We, we've right. got to continue to be on the cutting edge on the front, the forefront of this and, and what, it, what it will mean and what it will translate into um, for, for, the, for the sake of our communities and our players and our, and our audiences. Well, you've heard it here first. Chargers. <laughs> the Charger Careers Forum is happy to have Wim Stocks on board from World Gaming Collegiate Star League. Thank you very much for your time today, sir. I appreciate your insight. Um, and for all you Chargers out there listening, it sounds like guys like Wim are looking for visionaries, people that think outside of the box and, and students that are visionary in nature. So you take that to the bank. Well, well so much. summed it up nicely, Marcus. That's great. <laughs> Thanks for being on board. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Thank you for watching the Chargers Career Forum a data-driven resource for student and employer engagement and success at the University of New Haven. Follow the Career Development Center on Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I'm Marcus Packer.